greetings, everyone. I bring you greetings from Pacoima First United Methodist Church in the city of Pacoima, California. I am Reverend Dr. Lydia Waters, the senior pastor, and we are just so happy that you've joined our worship. So I want you to gather around uh, the podcast in whichever form you're watching. I want you to come if you have the word of God or any instrument that will bring it up for you and have that ready for the scripture that will come later. I want you to put a smile on your face. Let's begin with a song of praise to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Now the words will appear. Let us join in with our minister of music, Sister Hope Carr, accompanied by her husband, Brother Darnell Carr. And let us sing praises to the Lord our God. Because you know, you know, when praises go up, what? Blessings come down. scripture lesson for today is found in the New Testament Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 9 verses 2 through 8. Mark 9 2 through 8. And listen now for the word of the Lord. Six days later Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who was talking with Jesus. And then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, is it even good for us to be here? Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, as I come stand before your people, I ask that you would allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, for you are my strength and you are my Redeemer. 
In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray it. And let all of you watching say, Amen. Our sermon topic for today is From the Valley to the Mountaintop. Beloved, in our lesson today, we are going to visit an occasion when the Lord Jesus Christ had to do something that would reassure his followers that he was surely the divine Son of God. He wanted his disciples to know without a doubt that he, Jesus, was fully God and fully human. And that is an awesome reality. The Bible says in verse 2, Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. Six days later refers to the reality that six days had passed since the disciples had heard some very disturbing news from Jesus. Jesus had shared with them that he, the Son of God, must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And then after three days, rise again. Oh my, oh my. Please hear me today now. Beloved, when you say and you understand that being a Christian means that we want to be like Jesus, oh, we better understand what that really means. And so Jesus makes the meaning of being a disciple of Jesus Christ clear to them and us. He continued with these words. If any of you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Wow. Well, listening to this news, that put the disciples in a kind of valley atmosphere. They did they didn't want to hear that their Lord and Master would experience great suffering. They didn't want to hear that he would die. They didn't even understand this business about rising on the third day. And now, and now, to top it off, Jesus told them that they too would have to undergo some hard times and some suffering to be the disciples of Jesus. Mm. What's going on? I can hear somebody saying, what's happening? Well, the Bible tells us the truth, even when we don't want to hear it. Oh, my dearly beloved, have you ever been told something that just puts you in a valley atmosphere? If you have heard the news that your body is sick with cancer and that you tested positive for the coronavirus, Oh, that'll put you in a valley atmosphere. If you hear that your child has been arrested by the police and is in jail and then goes to prison, that will put you in a valley atmosphere. When you're told that your job is letting you go when you're already living from paycheck to paycheck, that will put you in a valley atmosphere. You know, when you go to the ATM machine and there is no money and you need gas in your car to get to work, when you, when you fail a test or when you realize that you cannot do the things that you used to do, when you, when you don't want to even go home anymore, life, 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 life is full of valley experiences. All of us, all of us will experience lots of valleys if we are blessed to live long enough. And somebody say amen. However now, verse 2 in our lesson says six days later. Remember, in other words, we learned that the Lord will not allow you to stay in the valley forever, but for only a season. And then remember this, Jesus is never too late. Oh, when we find ourselves walking through our valley, oh, he may not come. When we want him, but you know what the elders say. But he always comes on time. He promises that he'll never give us more than we can bear. So the Bible says six days later. Hmm. That means, that means after the disciples had had time to really deal with the valley. Sometimes we need to allow people to deal with the valley. Stop rescuing them from the valley. After they had spent some uncomfortable time in the valley, 
and they were ready to give up and give in. The Bible says, however, six days later, Jesus came and got them and took them with him up a high mountain, way up high on a mountaintop. Oh, I need you to say out loud, say out loud, trouble don't last always. Say, this too shall pass. Oh, my God. Hang on, beloved. Hang on because Jesus is coming to the rescue. Oh, that sounds like some hope talking and hope thinking. Oh, I praise God for hope. Beloved, this is a message with hope. When you're going through some difficult times, just stand because Jesus is coming to take you to the mountaintop. <laughs> Glory to God, he's coming. Jesus took his inner circle of the 12 disciples with him to the mountaintop. Don't try to take everybody with you to the mountaintop. Not all the 12, but the three. Those who seem to know him and understand him best. He took his inner circle. You ought to have an inner circle. Those who showed the most promise for kingdom building. He took his inner circle. Those who loved him more. He took his inner circle. They were three loyal disciples. He took Peter. Oh, you know I love Peter. Big mouth, impulsive Peter from the hood, who later was bold in his preaching about Jesus. He took James, not his brother James, but James, the brother of John, who was there too. Oh, James was ambitious and short-tempered and judgmental, but deeply committed to Jesus. Then there was John. John, the disciple who the Bible says was the disciple who Jesus loved. John. Like his brother James was ambitious and judgmental too. But Jesus grew and changed. But John, I'm sorry. G John grew and changed to be very loving and strong at the same time. Jesus called James and John the sons of thunder. They were bold. All three men, Peter, James, and John, were tight with Jesus. They were his favorite disciples. Oh, don't apologize for having favorites. They were his favorites. To, to, Jesus was so attuned to these three that he knew that they needed some special time alone with him after hearing the disturbing news of Jesus' future. Oh, they were the ones who Jesus was counting on to be strong. They were the ones that Jesus was counting on to assist him in his assignment from God. Be careful who you surround yourself with, beloved. Child of God, sometimes when you find yourself in the valley, it is just a preparation for the trip Jesus has planned for you on the mountaintop. Jesus was not taking people to the mountaintop with him who were fragile or depressed or sad. No, no, Jesus wanted to take those who could lift him up and understand who he really was. And this news was going to be news that not everybody, not even his family members or just anybody could understand. Because first of all, we cannot begin to understand what it is to go to the mountaintop unless we've been in the valley. Can I have an amen? You see, when we have gone through, when we have been under when we have almost turned around to go the wrong way, when we are having trouble standing, then, after that, it's time for a mountaintop experience. Glory to God. The mountaintop experience is a reward for walking through and not stopping until we get to the other side of the valley. If you want to get your reward, say amen. Therefore, Jesus wanted to take these men to the mountaintop to allow them to witness something that would surely convince them that Jesus was more than a human being. Everybody was not teachable enough or spiritual enough or, or strong enough to get that understanding. But these three men, they were special. I, I want to be special to Jesus, don't you? So, so what happened on the mountaintop, I'm going to tell you about it. Because you hear somebody saying, what happened on the mountaintop, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. The Bible says that Jesus was transfigured before them. Ooh, on the mountaintop. And that means that just when 
Jesus went through a metamorphosis. His chemistry changed. He began to glow. His clothes became dazzling white. Such as no one on earth could bleach them. And so, as if that was not enough, two dead men appeared in full life with Jesus. And they were talking together. It was the transfiguration of Jesus. This supernatural change of things happened to reveal Jesus' divine nature. Moses showed up, even though he was dead, to represent the law. And Elijah showed up, even though he was dead, to represent the prophets. Ah, oh, their appearance showed Jesus as the fulfillment of both the Old Testament law and the prophetic promises. Sometimes we need to leave the valley and go to the mountaintop with Jesus where supernatural, transrational things will happen. Signs and wonders. All the portals are open right now for signs and wonders happening in our midst so that we too can be reminded of who Jesus is. Glory to God. How Child of God, we need to open ourselves up to feel, to react, to show some emotions. Some of us act like we... You see, emotions are important to have. Because sometimes the experience cannot be told and shared in words alone. That's why black people don't hold hymnals because they get in the way. They get it, they get in, they make us too still. We got to be able to move. Sometimes it takes some tears and some reaction, some movement, some awe, oh, some excitement. Sometimes it takes a smile, a laugh, a hug, a dance, some physical movement other than words. Listen, listen, when we allow Jesus to take us up to the mountaintop, we should expect to get to get there and then learn something different. It ought to happen every time we talk about Jesus. Because Jesus will not allow you to come down the mountain the same way you went up. If you are still doing what you've always done, well, that's a sign that Jesus has not spent much time with you, beloved, at the mountaintop. Mm, Jesus, help me. Because time with Jesus always leaves us elevated in his glory. Jesus always leaves us better, healed, restored, renewed, born again, and changed. Oh, some of you know what I'm talking about today, beloved, because many of you can sing the song. You know the song, this Black History Month, that song, He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all oh, the joy that Filled my soul. Something. I love that. Something. I, something happened. And now I know that he touched me and made me whole. Jesus will take you to the mountain. Well, the Bible says that Peter began to say something. Teacher, is it good for us to even be here? And what Peter said really didn't make any sense. But you know what? But you know what? When you are scared out of your boots, you make up something to say. Especially when you don't want to appear afraid or surprised because you want to be the person all together. Oh, help me, Lord, for the all together people. Child of God, the word of God tells us that these three disciples were just terrified. You know, when things happen in life that we do not have control over and we just don't understand, yes, we can get terrified. It's a human state to be in when things that are way out and supernatural happen. But when we are a child of God, we must be prepared and even expect from God to do phenomenal things that will just shake us up sometimes. Things we don't have words for. Things that amaze us. Things that we have never seen before. They are called miracles and wonders and marvels and dreams and visions. They're called a phenomenon. And the truth is this, Jesus is the one who is a miracle-making, wonder-working God, fully human and fully divine. Glory to God. Oh, but even though they were terrified, the event was not over. 
Don't let fear stop you. It's not over until God says it is over. And so the Bible says. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. You must be careful that a mountaintop experience does not frighten you too much. Because going to the mountaintop is a spiritual, emotional, extraordinary experience. It's a yielding, humbling, glorifying experience. It's a holy experience. There is nothing greater. You can't be afraid of what only Jesus can do. Because fear is not of God. And fear will keep you from receiving your blessing. Oh, I love it when a saint of God wants to lay hands on me. Hallelujah. Because I know that Jesus uses saved people as an instrument of his divine power. Claim your gifts and use them to heal somebody. And then they will believe in a divine, supernatural Jesus. Give him the glory. And so God said, listen to Jesus. And they looked around and saw no one with him anymore but Jesus. So take this advice, beloved. Listen to Jesus. Because when all is said and done, it's only Jesus. When you have heard what everybody else has to say, it's still only Jesus. When you have searched the books and asked the scholars and searched the internet and stayed in the library and flown to the other side of the universe. It's still only Jesus. When you have made money and traveled the world and seen the best specialists, paid the best therapists, listened to the counselors, called your brothers and sisters. It's still Jesus. Because a human being just does not have all the spiritual answers we need today. Jesus, hear this, is the answer for the world today. Beside him, there is no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus, the Lamb of God. Jesus, the Lily of the Valley. Jesus, the one who does all things well. Jesus, the Son of God. There is power in his name. Jesus. Oh yeah, the songwriter says it like this. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All this good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Jesus, your hope for all that I do. Jesus, 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 you're the center of my joy. the center of my joy All that's good and perfect comes from you Lord, you're the heart of my contentment Hope for all I do Oh, Jesus you're the center of my joy Oh, Jesus You are the center of my joy Jesus, Lord, you are the center The center of my joy Jesus, 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 the center of my joy. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Oh,
Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Oh, child of God. I hope this message blessed you. And now open the doors of the church and I invite you to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. There's nothing more important than that. And that's what God wants for you. I want you to put your name on the church roll, give your tithes and offerings, and share your gifts and talents to God's church. Oh, thank God for media. The church can be regional. And it can be national. It can be international. And so any of you who are listening and you're not a member of a church, give us a call. Write us. Go to Pacoma Church, uh, First Church at gmail.com. www.pacomafumc.com. And I do hope that you will say amen to this service by just hitting the thumbs up button by subscribing to our YouTube channel. And remember now, remember, spread the word of God by sharing this video. And now to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now. Jesus name.